Hello. I'm reviewing there is City of Ghosts, Tunnel of Bones, and Bridge of Souls. And this is possibly could be extended, but right now there's only these three books in this trilogy. So we're only reviewing these three books. Spooky time, I figured I'd get a spooky review up. Let's start City of Ghosts. City of Ghosts follows Cassie as her parents start to begin to film their TV show. She learns early on in the book that her TV, her parents' TV show got greenlit. And so she gets to be part of a docu-series of them going around and interviewing haunted places. Yet her parents do not know that she herself is able to talk to ghosts. She can go into the in-between because she did die. Um, she fell off her bike into a lake and died. And her best friend, Jake, who is a ghost himself, can take her in-between and she soon learns what that means and what that en ensues. They end up going over to Scotland in this particular first book for their first set of episodes of the of the docu-series. And Scotland was beautifully atmospheric and I just really, really enjoyed it. What else can I say about this book in like a non spoilery fashion? I really I like the main character Cass. Um, I think it came off really nice. Jake and her are basically tied to one as like like a like a tied up string or whatever. And so personally to me, I really like what they did there and the angle. And let me see if I can't move you guys. So they end up going through Scotland and her parents are talking about all these different places and they go into all these different places that are haunted. And she ends up seeing this 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 woman. I guess you could say, it ends up getting a little bit spooky. I really liked the villain. I thought it was really well done. Also, there is a twist about 70% into it that I did not see coming, which was really nice because it's a middle grade thriller, a middle grade horror novel. So like, you know, I, I'm expecting to know everything and I didn't and it caught me off guard and I was very intrigued the whole way through. And that's basically all I can say for non-spoilers for City of Ghosts. I do can say that every book does follow and you do need to read them in order. I was a little curious about that because each book takes place in a different location, but the character developments and things, the things that happen with Jake here and her new friend that she meets and stuff all that do rely into the other books as well which we'll get into i'm um, going forward by the way this is my non-spoiler part of overall i'm giving probably the trilogy not read the last i'm in the middle of the last one so i'm not done with it yet like a four out of five so i would highly recommend if you're interested in picking up city of ghosts this one's great this is my favorite one so far which was the original so it's always great to have a good opening and i think it has a phenomenal opening so yeah that being said we're gonna jump into spoilers now i'm not gonna try to spoil too many things because this is a middle grade series I don't know, for some reason. I feel like maybe that's bad. And I'm going to be talking about sequels, and sequels do require spoilers for certain books, you know, because we're talking about sequels. So one of the big things here that I want to talk about is obviously the fact that the fact that she loses her 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 glow, her inner strength, or whatever, because of this this creature. And I was really shocked by it, and it took such a dark turn, and I was very curious to see how it all played out. I also like her best friend that she ends up meeting here, not best friend, her friend that she ends up meeting here as well. I think her name is Laura, Lana, something out of those lines. I might look it up and put it on the screen. I really like her, and I like her. Her characterization and I've just enjoyed them as friends overall. Very much enjoyed this book, like I said. I really liked how haunting the ending was and how the third act really built up and it was so well done and the mystery, you know, how it all came together. I really liked it. So, Save a Ghost was a four out of five stars for me. I liked it. The next one would be Tunnel of Bones by Victoria Slav. This is her parents going over, where did they go? Paris. They go over to Paris. And this has mostly to do with the catacombs, which I'll explain to you in a different update. Hello! And I want to come in here and let's finish our discussion on Bridge of Souls and Tunnel of Bones by Victoria Slav. Bridge of Bones. Let's talk about Tunnel of Bones. Not Bridge of Bones. I combined them. Tunnel of Bones, like I had mentioned, is... A story that takes, it's the second book, they travel to, not New Orleans, to Paris, and it mostly takes place with the catacombs. The big bad in this one is a poltergeist, and so we get to see the effects of that. And then also, my big issue with this one is I just never really felt the stakes were high enough, and I never felt the danger. I really liked Tunnel of Bones, I liked the characterization, but also the writing for me personally fell a little bit flat. She changed up her, her writing here. And I'm not really sure if it was just more dumbed down because it's for a younger audience, which is very possible. And I, I know I probably shouldn't be judging it because if it is for a younger audience, that audience was obviously not made for me. But I'm going to judge it as if I was going to read this normally, as I think you can anybody can read these, as I think they're perfect 
typically scary enough to frighten anybody, but also they're so intriguing that I think everybody would enjoy it. So I'm just gonna review it as if I didn't know it was a middle grade. And if I didn't know it was a middle grade, I think the writing was really dumbed down, especially in the last like four or five chapters. And it was quite frustrating, I would say, to to read. So that was my biggest issues with Tunnel of Bones in a non swirly fashion. I really enjoyed Cassie as a character and her evolution here. It's small, but I liked it. Also, I really liked diving into the world of Cassie's world of becoming a ghost hunter, the different things that she encounters. There's also a little girl who pops up, which is really, really interesting. And Laurel, which one of her new friends from the last book, makes quite a few cameos as well. Not in physical form, but in text message form. Jake here also plays an interesting role and I like the development a lot here, but I just don't ever think they actually do anything with it. So I found it more frustrating than anything. Church is adorable, adored him. I don't think it's church. Church is, um, what's his face cat? Uh, Magnus's cat. So it's not church, but their cat is, their cat is very cute and her parents, I think are one of the more frustrating elements of the whole entire series. I don't really have anything to say on them on any forefront. The action was great and the veil was very interesting and the catacomb, excellent. I do believe the story was extremely sad and upsetting. And so I do recommend you look up the triggers for this one because of the graphic depictions, especially in the third act. I think it's very necessary for you to look up some stuff. Um, I also, I think these are books that you need to read if you're reading it as a kid. Um, or if you're trying to find recommendations for spooky books to read to your kid. I think these are great buddy reads between a parent and a child. So you can tell your child, if, you know, you can help them through everything that Cassie is going through. I think in that regard, it's really well written and there's a lot of conversations to be had there. It's also a lot of these things are factually true. And so you're getting some type of historicalness out of it, which is which is nice. And I only know that because of the New Orleans one, which is to jump into the next book and the last book. And that is out right now, Bridge of Souls. The first thing I wanna take from Bridge of Souls is this reminded me a lot of City of Ghosts, which City of Ghosts, I think is my favorite one out of the three. Bridge of Souls takes place like a week later. So all these stories I didn't realize took place in such a short amount of time, which makes Cassie to me an anomaly, which takes away some of the threat from this particular book. I really enjoyed Bridge of Souls. Bridge of Souls has the, the main antagonist of death, in it. That's not a spoiler. The Poltergeist, I don't believe is a spoiler either, is they're both in the subscription, the description of the book. And Cassie herself, I think, has grown a little bit. Not a lot, but she has grown a little bit. She's not as curious, and so she doesn't get in as much trouble. She just listen to authorities when they tell her not to do something a little bit more. Plus, there's some society stuff in here that I found to be very fascinating, and I've liked all the characters, but once again, Jake, for me personally, really fell flat, which is really funny, because that's me, and I I guess I do fall flat sometimes. But him and specifically here, I think fell flat. And I think with the choice that they made in the third act, Victoria made in the third act, I think it could have even been even better if it would have went darker. But I have a feeling it didn't go darker because it was written for a younger audience. And so you do have to have the hope the hopeful feeling in the end. And this one sure does. It also ends in a way that you would believe that the story will continue on for many more books to come. We're only deep, we're, we only have like a toe into the universe of Cassie and the ghost hunting that she can, you know, do. And there's so many more other creatures that we could maybe find that she has to fight. But our, my personal suggestion as Victoria is watching this is to age Cassie up. You did a middle grade with her, that's great. Let's do a young adult series with her next. Make the books longer, as I know you like to do, and make them more intense and darker and even scarier and have the stakes be raised even higher to more dire and deathly consequences. As I think that will make the series stand out like no other. We got introduced to Cassie at a very important time in her life. She is 12 years old. Let's see what she looks like when she's 16. I think the time difference and the time jump in between the series would be great. And it could be a perfect excuse to take a few years off of the series itself. And you know, for us to be itching for the next book, as I know Victoria Slob's fans are always dire for. So, me included. I'm very looking forward to it. And she has another middle grade coming out as we speak. So there's no reason to continue on with this series, in my opinion. This one came out in March of this year. And so it would be another few years before we probably got the next book. But I personally do want to see a little bit of a time jump to make them older so the stakes can be even better. Because the best part about Bridge of Souls was the stakes and how scared I was for the main character. Not as scared as City of Ghosts, but very scared nonetheless. And so I think it became more rounder in the end. 
And that's my non-spoilery reviews for the entire series of that's out currently for Cassie or Sea of Ghosts uh, trilogy. Let me know what you guys think about this trilogy in the comments down below. If there are spoilers, do mark them as such for people who maybe have never read them before, especially if they happen in, actually if they happen in any of the books, but especially if they happen in later books. You do have to read all three books in order. It's not like a pick my own adventure kind of experience either. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you guys did, please give me a big fat thumbs up. Don't forget to comment down below and I'll talk to you guys all soon. Goodbye.